Welcome everybody uh, to Sunday Night Worship. We got Maddie Rowe here with us this week. We are so glad uh, that you guys are tuning in. If you're tuning in, I guess you can do it tonight or tomorrow or whenever you want. But hopefully you guys are tuning in. Hopefully you're having a great, great week. Blake has an incredible message prepared for us tonight. We're so glad that you guys are here. We're in this with you. Hang in there. We're going to sing one of my favorite songs. It's called Great is Thy Faithfulness. And then we're going to do another new song after that. Both of these we haven't done with you guys before. Uh, but Great is Thy Faithfulness. Uh, you should know it. Um, if you don't, it's going to be a, a great a great day for you uh, to get to know Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's a cool song written a long time ago. But yeah, I just want to invite you guys to worship with us tonight. Here we go. Great is Thy Faithfulness O God my Father There is no shadow of turning with Thee Thou changest not Thy compassions they fail not as Thou Oh, wow. 
was another in the wars Holding back the seas and Should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden But another die for me close to you in the season, Lord. We give you this night in Jesus' name. Amen. I like to be in control. I like to choose when I check social media. I like to choose when I eat. I like to choose when I go on vacation, when I go out to eat, when I see my friends, when I take a nap. I like the feeling that I have some control over what happens in my life. So this time that we're going through right now, it's, it's really hard for me because a lot of things are out of my control. 
I can't decide to go out to eat anymore because restaurants are closed. I, I can't meet with my small group every week anymore because we might get each other sick. I can't buy the bread I want at the store because every time I go, they're out of my favorite bread. And I can't be with my grandfather who's in the hospital because no visitors are allowed in the hospital right now. So this time is, is hard for me because a lot of these things that I normally can control are out of my control. And I know that this time is, is hard for you too. I know that maybe for you, you, you can't be with your friends at school like you're used to. Maybe you can't play the sports or be in the concerts or act in the plays or go to the after school clubs that you're used to, to going to and, and participating in every day. I know that you can't fill your schedule with these things that, that you're used to filling your schedule with. So you're left at home wondering, you know, what, what do I do next? Are we gonna go back to school this year? And, and when is all of this gonna be over? So with so many things being out of our control, what do we do? How do we handle this? I, I think that now, more than ever, this is the perfect time to give control to God. I want to encourage you and let you know, again, this is the time to do that, the time to give control to God. If you're struggling with not being able to do what you want to do or, or not doing what you're used to doing, or if you're struggling with feeling alone and, and anxious and not knowing what's going to happen next, again, it's time to give control over to God. I want you all to do something with me for just a second. I want you to close your fists just like this. Close your fists. You might look a little silly, but that's okay. This is what you look like when you want to be in control. You hold on to everything you can. You don't want to let go. And when you're forced to let go because of something like coronavirus, the sickness going around, you just don't know what to do. When your fists are closed, you can't receive the love, the encouragement, the peace, the joy that God wants to offer you. Go ahead and try. Try to hold out your hand and say, God, I'm open. I'm available. I want to receive what you are offering me. Try to do it with your fists closed. It makes no sense. You can't do it. But when you open your hands and you say, God, I need you to take control because things seem really out of control right now, and I'm not sure what to do. When you do that, that's when God begins to work in your life. He'll give you the peace that you've been trying to find by, by scrolling through your phone one more time, by finishing that puzzle that you just finished a few days ago, but you're doing it again, that peace you're trying to find by winning one more match of Fortnite or whatever you're playing. It's time to open up your hands and ask God for help. And the most common excuse that you give for not doing this is, well, I don't have time. I'm too busy. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Well, that excuse is out the window. I'm sorry, but that excuse, those excuses don't work anymore. If you can't take the time to, to talk to God through prayer, or to learn more about him by reading scripture right now, then when are you going to do it? If not now, then when? Tomorrow is today, and now is the time to grow closer to God, to give God control of your life. And, and as you grow closer to God, as you give God control, you'll move away from this closed fist, I want control mentality to an open-handed God, show me what to do mentality. There's a story in, in the Gospel of Luke, the story of the Good Samaritan. Most of you all know this story. It's in Luke chapter 10, and I'm going to read the few verses, 25 through 29. These verses lead into the story of the Good Samaritan. One day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do? to inherit eternal life. Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? 
The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? So this religious teacher, he wanted to feel good and feel justified about all of the things he was doing. He wanted to make sure that he was checking off all of the boxes that, that led to his salvation. He wanted to make sure he was doing everything right. He wanted to be in control of his salvation. But, but Jesus told him a story, the story of the Good Samaritan. And, and again, a lot of you all know this story, and, and I won't read through all of these verses. I encourage you to read through them on your own. But in this story, there's this man who gets, who gets beaten up. He's left on the side of the road, he's bleeding, he's, he's half dead, and he's left there to die. And a priest sees this man on the road, and he decides that he's going to just kind of walk on by him. And then a temple assistant sees this man in, in the road, and he decides he's just going to walk by him. But then this Samaritan man sees this bloody, beaten, almost dead guy in the road, and he says, you know what? I'm going to step in and help. He, he dresses his wounds, he gets them all cleaned up, and he takes him to an inn, and he pays to have him taken care of. See, the priest and the temple assistant who, who walked on by in this story, they, they had close fists. They decided they wanted to control who they interacted with, and, and control their levels of comfort in their life. And, and they didn't want to step into a situation that seemed a little bit weird. They, they didn't want to have anything to do with a Samaritan man. And, and he was gross. He was bloody. They didn't want anything to do with it. They wanted to control what they could control. But this Samaritan man, he had open hands. He said, God, show me what to do. And when the time came for him to take care of somebody else, even though it was crazy, even though this guy was bloody, he... He was about ready to die. He stepped in and helped because he had open hands, and God showed him what to do. As we end our time together tonight, I want you to think about in your own life, what are you trying to control? Are there things in your life that, that you're holding on to that you could give to God? And if so, how can you start giving those things to God? tonight. Let's pray. God, thank you for our time together. We love you, God, and, and we're thankful to be able to, to learn about you together, learn about how we can move from this closed fist, I want control mentality to an, to an open-handed God, show me what to do mentality. It's, it's an awesome thing to learn, especially during this time where a lot of things are out of our control. So thank you for this this time again tonight, Lord, we love you. Amen.